сейчас, когда властно встает тишина. The Federal Agency of Culture and Cinematography бегут из укрытий, кто и когда начертал письмена. The Video and Cinema Studio, The Path of Time. Событий, что еще скверного произойдет на рубеже этих Present the documentary film. Может быть, черное солнце взойдет, и изменений никто не заметит. Spirit. Словно эра смотри, с мрадных чудовищ слепых и зловещих, как растопить холод пляшущих льди, остановить бег пронзительных трещин. With the participation of the writer and author of bioinformational technology, Arkady Petrov. We are not concealing that this system of spiritual development and revelation of our hidden possibilities is a synthesis of ancient teachings about nature, the essence of consciousness, the soul and the spirit. We perceive this as a real possibility for humanity to take the next step towards the evolution and as a possibility of obtaining new capacities of self-healing, self-regulation, of influencing the physical, chemical and all the other processes in our bodies and not as an abstract discipline. You are listening to the online radio of the new technology site of healing. Humanity has entered the 21st century against a backdrop of increased mortality due to the increase of diseases. The impotence of classical medicine, which operates only on the physical body, becomes more and more obvious. However, several centuries before, both Eastern and Western healers already knew that in addition to the physical body, humans have six subtle bodies, which are all fed by primary energy called prana, according to Hindu tradition. The circulation of this energy depends directly on the permeability of the energy channels of the body and earth, and also on the health of the energy vortices called chakras. The ancient masters first read the presence of sickness in the perturbations of the life force energy in the body, and they used many methods to restore it. These treatments showed themselves to be efficacious. We can conclude from this that truly effective medicine should be based on this multi-dimensional anatomical model of the body. In our days, the tendency towards this paradigm is very weak. I was hospitalized with a kidney disease, and they recommended the removal of my left kidney. I was obliged to give my consent, even though I understood the worst-case scenario. So I asked the doctor what was going to happen to my right kidney, because it had also been affected by the disease. He said that it was very probable that I would just lose it after a time. So I was in the hospital very worried about the situation when suddenly I began to have visions. I saw completely different subjects from the life of Christ. These visions were linked by a common thread. They took place consecutively. They treated biblical questions of all kinds in a completely different manner than what I had read in the Bible. I didn't have to close my eyes to see this. I wasn't sleeping. My perception of the world was expanded at that time. The sensations did not scare me at all. I felt that all this was taking place in some other space outside of our normal perception of the world, but that all of this had a direct effect on happenings on the earth.
Вы слушаете интернет-радио сайта New You are listening to online radio from the site New Healing Technologies. In our country, we have concurrently created some centers where we use bioinformation technology as the basis, presented by the Arkady Petrov company. Certain results obtained go very badly with the current vision of the way things are. Mostly, this involves the regeneration of tissue and of previously removed organs and the healing of late-stage cancers. There already exist many examples of this kind in the archives of the Arkady Petrov company, which are legally certified by official state medical testing facilities. The technology used in the Petrov Center and others like it were obtained by Arkady Petrov and Igor Arepiev with their method of clairvoyance. But the learning of students who come to the center to receive health only comes after approval of the techniques and understanding of the methods. In these centers, the action is principally placed on the art of self-diagnostics and self-healing of the patient, and not on the curative powers of the employees of the center. These visions seemed like a series of coherent and consecutive images. I could not start them with my own will. They appeared and disappeared by themselves. Appear, disappear. I could not control them. That is to say, this process is probably directed from another level by some force, and I was the spectator and the apprentice. I saw what was the most important, that the possibility of seeing this other world is real. I did not have the sensation that my brain had gone haywire, but that I was participating in an interesting process of exploration. As I have a doctorate in philosophy, it was very interesting for me, because it is also a science of consciousness. Writing about it right away seemed the correct reaction. I took a notebook and a pencil and started to write everything down, because it was quite simply very interesting. As soon as I started to write this, I felt that my pains disappeared. The symptoms of disease began to diminish. After one month from the moment I started to write, my disease had completely disappeared. All the symptoms had disappeared. And after that, as if by a miracle, both of my kidneys became healthy. I left the hospital without losing either of my kidneys. This process had taken a month and interested me enormously. I thought, how is this possible? What did they miss that all this is gone? I could not explain just then what had happened. But a certain idea that it was necessary to study this subject was already forming in my mind. You are listening to online radio from the site New Healing Technologies. The phenomenon of our time which we call channeling, that is receiving information from the subtle realm with the aid of a channel, has been known to humanity since ancient times. Initiates or saints receive texts which determine the spiritual development. The books The Secret Doctrine, which were written by Helena Blavatsky, were almost completely received by a subtle channel of illuminated masters. She had never seen the hundreds of books which she cited in her works with her own eyes, but she cited them very precisely. This information from the teachers of humanity who live in higher realms arrives constantly in our world by sensitive people, and mostly by people who have a highly developed clairvoyance. The technology recognized and practiced in the Arkady Petrov Center contains concrete recommendations of workflow for the practice for people who want to develop their superpowers and heal their bodies. Work now concretely with the reality transforming sphere with an organ. We will work to normalize the function of the liver. Imagine the reality transforming sphere in front of you. You will find it 60 centimeters in front of you. Concentrate and fix that sphere right in front of you. You can now see your liver through the sphere the right and left lobes. The pathology can present itself in different ways. It could be some gray clouds or different looking bodies. 
It could have the appearance of a band. The images can look different. When you have fixed an image, you've got it. Now it is necessary to normalize. You give an impulse by the consciousness of your spirit. Imagine a ray of silver color. You have to direct this ray to your liver and transmit it to the pathology to get rid of the pathology, to clean it, to get rid of any spots. Put the words, normal condition. You are ready to try now. It is more and more obvious that by the force of his mind a person can heal their body from whatever state of destruction it is in. But only the most tenacious and logical people in their actions will obtain success, that is, people who are truly convinced of their limitless potential. This is exactly the case of Tamara Nikitina, dentist in Omsk. I was happy. My husband is a good man. I have three children. I worked. I did sports with my children. We skied in the winter. We went to the swimming pool. We even did the high dive. In summer, we loved to go for walks in the forest. We would go to the country in a car and we loved to go for walks, collect mushrooms. We even had little competitions among ourselves. Who could collect the most? All the while talking, everything was fine. I was like everyone else except I said that I would live to be 100 years old and not less. My husband said he would live only to 75 years and I answered him, but then I would live so much longer than you. No, I am not in agreement. We'll live together until we are 100, you'll see. <laughs> The situation changed. It is difficult to talk about even today. It started off with depression due to my husband's alcoholism. I was bothered with thoughts. What is going to happen to me? What good is it to keep on living? Each year we have to pass a test, a complete medical exam, at the specialists. I took the test, and they found a very high red blood sedimentation rate, 50 to 60 instead of 6 to 7. I began other tests to find the cause. I had a mammogram, an ultrasound, and they found a malignant tumor. They said they had to operate, do chemotherapy, all that. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Tatiana, have patience. Only three more days in your mind and the force of your will will heal your sickness. The revelation of my abilities of clairvoyance did not happen all at once, and it was not a constant state of mind. This state appeared and disappeared. That is, everything depends on how much attention a person gives these things. In this way, you can of course see not only bodily organs, but also events, even far off ones in the past or future. Everything we see, we see by the cells of our bodies, because they have subtle channels which are connected to all the global structures of the universe. In reality, our consciousness is a very powerful instrument. We just have to learn how to use it. Man possesses unlimited possibilities. We are simply unaware of our capacities and limits. When someone trains their mind's capacity, they see how it changes and can notice the dynamic. They can as well, one might say, create images of the future to which the cells of their body can be directed. The expansion of the consciousness of our cells, the acceptance of the idea that they can do much more than their current programming, all this leads to the reprogramming of the entire body. We try therefore to awaken a faith in self due to this knowledge.
Nevertheless, bioinformation techniques should not be considered only as healing techniques. They are also practices for spiritual development and apprenticeship with one's interior nature. There are only a few, those who aspire to expand and develop their consciousness, who can get there. The story of painter Anatole Ostrostov of the city of St. Mark is an excellent example of this. He was a well-known landscape painter and a man who lived a normal life, but when health problems showed up, Ostrostov was not able to cure them without changing the character of his thoughts and aspirations. When I was 19, they took out a kidney. I continued to live and work, having a positive attitude about things in my life. I was already a painter at that time. In spite of the fact that they told me I should follow a diet and that I should protect my last kidney to the maximum, I did not respect this advice. That is, I overloaded it. And I suppose it was difficult for my kidney to function normally because of this. Result, I had urinary tract infections. I felt as though I had aged before even reaching maturity. I knew there was something wrong, something off, and that other ways existed of relating to this life. At the age of 60, I developed a passion for philosophy books. I discovered spiritual books, but did not discover anything satisfactory to me, something unique as I wished. One day I discovered the literature of Grigory Grabovoy, and I knew right away that this was what I needed. I was already aware of the fact that there were people working in the same direction, Arepiev and Petrov. I made a voyage to meet Petrov. Alex Kakatovovich gave me an impulse of two to three minutes. It was an impulse he did to heal my kidney with the help of a prayer to God that my kidney would grow back. There are certain people who come to the center and simply wait for results without involving themselves in the healing process. They don't question why they are able to heal instead of dying as it is written, for example, in medical books about cancer. They don't think about it, they just sit there quietly waiting for results. But this is not correct. The more a person aspires to learn and understand this world while believing, the more chance they have to heal. Because if a person's perception of the world does not change, another more serious problem will appear in the next day, in place of the one just healed. When we pursue false goals, like riches or power, or the domination of others, this trains us to commit incorrect actions, and then this returns against us by some kind of unhappiness. But then the time of maturity and wisdom arrive, and you begin to notice your actions, good or bad, the ones you have done, and if you start making the right decisions, noticing your faults, many health problems disappear. The process of understanding the world is itself the healing process. For many years, the most gifted and progressive scientists have concentrated on the phenomenon of tissue regeneration by clairvoyance and have started to study it. Among these scientists, the most well-known are Igor Politaev and Peter Garyev. 
Есть теория, которую мы разрабатываем. Называется теория волнового генома. The theory we are developing is called the theory of wave genetics. The sense of this theory is very simple. Our genetic apparatus is capable of creating electromagnetic fields that generate our organism. A chromosome represents a library where all the information which can be extracted and includes everything necessary for the regeneration of someone's own teeth, someone's liver, kidneys, pancreas, and anything. The principal task is to find the right book in this giant library and to read it. When a person who has the capability of influencing a sickness, uses these waves with the goal of regenerating the patient's kidney, for example, they transmit orders to them with these waves. This works very well, for example, in lizards, but they forgot them in human beings. Now these orders start the regeneration of organs and tissue. In European countries and the United States, there are many who recognize the value of new healing technologies. Simon Kudroff, a psychologist living in the United States, is one of them. I confronted the problem of cancer 10 years ago. The doctors told me they had to operate right away and start chemotherapy and the rest because that is the only way they have of healing cancer. I refused all these methods because I noticed something very simple. If someone hurts, say, a finger and it gets infected, it is obviously developing an abscess. But when a mass capable of killing develops in an organism, it makes no sense to operate in order to remove it, because we don't understand the reason it developed. I started looking for other ways. I am a believer, so I started praying to God for help, and I got it. I studied every possible and imaginable technique in America, and I tried to apply this information. Later, I heard about a certain Petrov in Arepayev in Moscow. I was very interested in Petrov's trilogy, Creation of the World. I went to his center in Moscow, where I took the course, first and second levels. Alex examined me and told me, I can tell you, we will start the healing process and all will go well. Later, when I returned to America, I took a medical exam which showed that my results had returned to normal, and I started to return to my normal lifestyle. When we work directly on carcinogenic tumors, we see that very often the process consists of three parts, information, energetic, and somatic, that is, the material part. Very often at the physical level, the process only reveals the signs of the sickness, which were in fact not present materially. As soon as there is a person who wishes medical treatment for cancer developing in their body, the information sticks like a film to the cells of their body, and the malignant process really gets going. If this person had gone to someone other than a doctor, a clairvoyant doctor, they would have simply extracted all that information. It's really simple to work with cancer. It just never develops. During a general strike of doctors, people heal much more often and have a better chance of living than if they had received medical care.
This statistic has been observed in Israel, Europe, and in the United States. So, during medical strikes, mortality rates drop 50%. People don't get healed due to the help of doctors, but in spite of their help, it's a fact. When I got my diagnosis, I understood that what I was doing was wrong, and I started to change from that moment on. My way of seeing the world began to change too. I understood the reasons everything happened to me were in myself. In my dark state of mind, it was necessary to clean it up and I saw the right way to go. At that time, Petrov's trilogy had been published and I started reading it. Before, for about two years, I had been studying the teachings of Grigory Petrovich Grabovoy, and having read all his books, I entered the world written about by Grigory Petrovich and Arkady Naumovich. When I had difficulty during this time, I heard voices. I saw faces. When later I saw this image of faces on the books, I learned that they were the ascended masters in heaven. After seven months, the first ganglions disappeared. Later, the others also went. This was not only tested on the left side, but also on the right side. The doctor said, what did you do? You should have been dead for a long time, but you still are coming here? We need to do an ultrasound of your intestines and breasts. But everything was fine. They couldn't find a thing. What are you looking for? I don't have anything. I'm healed. I saw everything around me beginning to change. My husband stopped drinking little by little and he started back to work. Now he leads a normal life. My children, who in the beginning could not believe in my healing, were afraid for me and always tried to send me to the hospital. Now they have sold their apartment and have built their house near me so we can live together, all close to nature. When the doctor told me this was very dangerous and that it was necessary to medicate me right away, I was lying in bed and I thought, here we go. There are already metastases developing in my body and I didn't go to the hospital, but I don't need to. I took your book and I got back to a positive frame of mind right away. I started reading and became sure that I should follow this path. We should remove the sickness from the body, but by using transformation. This transformation should be done by the patients themselves. They must, by their attention, create an image for health for themselves, their environment and family, even their far-off relatives. It's a simple moment, really, very simple. It's a state of mind where patients think not only about themselves, but also about others. When someone, even in a very difficult place, thinks about others at a certain time, you know, let's say someone snaps their fingers and at that moment everything changes for them. They are healed, everyone around them is healthy, and their family too. Everything around this person develops in a after five months, when I returned to St. Marat for the first time, I passed a medical examination of my kidneys. The doctor was very amazed. What do you have? I told him I had a certain operation, and he asked which one exactly. I told him the details. He began to examine me. He took an ultrasound and the images showed my kidney completely healthy, in a normal state, of a size of around 130 centimeters by 46 centimeters, with no pathology. Everything was functioning normally. Last time I felt something like a hole in my body in this place here. Before the regeneration, yes, before the regeneration. After that, I had a feeling of being filled up. I felt peace in my kidney and everywhere else too. 
Now I can tell you, you have the kidney of a 40-year-old. Your heart level is opening just fine. It's a normal phenomenon. The heart is opening. This is how your heart grows spiritually. You may have some pains, but it's not serious because it's not from the physical level. It's from your heart expanding. This will be a very strong impulse for the next development, rejuvenation, spiritual development, increasing strength. And afterwards, your mind will be cleansed also. Our body is like an indicator of our spiritual state. If there is something that doesn't work in your brain or in your way of seeing the world, the body reacts right away. I can't answer, but I want to see how the world develops. I'm connected to nature. I speak, we could say, with each bush, each tree. I learn things. I reflect. What's that? What's happening? Is this alive? Is it leading its life? Everything vibrates, everything flourishes, everything grows. I believe in the subtle realm, in God, and I am beginning to believe that these are the most important things in myself. I lived in the United States more than 30 years. I speak and think in English more often than in Russian. But I must say that what is happening now in Russia, this research, this technology, and I am not just speaking about Petrov and Arepiev, but also about very eminent people like Peter Garayev. In short, in this domain, all this puts Russia at the leading edge compared to the rest of the world. Not everything Arkady Petrov does is familiar to me because he created his system like Stanislavski. Those who follow his course open up their own clairvoyance. People from all over Russia come to his center. After their stay, they return home and begin to perform miracles. I have some people following me in the U.S. because many of them heard that I have healed myself. They come to me with identical problems. The first question I ask them, do you want to live? They look astonished and say, of course. Then I ask, please tell me, what are you ready to do to stay alive? So the probably idea that they need some soul that not tainted with a sophisticated intellectual mind, which actually blind us, the all our education is blind us from the fact who we really are. Because what we are doing here in this life, in this world, in this material world, we kind of uh, try to elevate our conscience to the, who we really are through these obstacles and experiences of this life. It is likely that the most important thing is that each of our souls keeps its purity and by that it's perception of our initial state and that it doesn't get burned out by our life experience because this experience blind us in a certain sense, much as education does and keeps us from being ourselves. The meaning of our progress through the difficulties of life is exactly in the increase and evolution of our consciousness. There are concepts such as the devil, but it seems to me that the devil is sort of a scapegoat the worst things people do, they put on someone else. In reality, this is wrong. All our unhappiness comes from ourselves. If we accept the responsibility for all our actions, including our bad ones, and promise never to repeat them, the devil will not be able to exist. The other teaching is optimist. It implies that each person possesses every capacity, every force to overcome whatever destruction, whether it's concerning an event or our health. Only things we create will exist. We ourselves create our own world. If we position ourselves among negative things, we will experience hell. 
If we position ourselves with the beautiful and positive, we will attain paradise. Here is the earth, which has been given to us, so let's make it a paradise. Let us do at least what is within reach to put some order in place. As for the church, it didn't exist at the time of Christ. The clergy simply wish to profit from our work. I don't reproach them. God help me. But the truth says we shouldn't neglect the church, especially for those who aspire to God. This is useful, but those who have already achieved this step are going from mother's milk to solid nourishment to become, in the words of Arkady Naumovich, a creator. Let's take an example. I have had my thyroid regenerated, but it doesn't matter which one, any organ, even the entire organism, right? We can regenerate the entire universe, and the result we can describe with the sentence. We can regenerate everything, absolutely everything. But, if one affirms without mind and faith, all regeneration becomes impossible. If I hold blasphemy, no regeneration becomes possible. If God permitted you to stay alive, if your organ was regenerated, if you were healed from your serious sickness, God permits you to create. He gave you permission. Go ahead, create. You should create. If you only do good, if you create positive things, that's what the permission is about. He will thank you for your positive, non-destructive creations. I pray every day. We are in a new century and new prayers have been invented. So that's what I do. At any moment, I perceive eternity in the light, in love, in harmony and in peace. And by saying this, I see people and I feel a light go from me which reaches those people. One time I was in a bus and everyone was arguing like crazy around me. So I said this prayer a few times and sent out the silvery white sphere as it was shown to me and I saw them calm down a little. Finally they sat down again quietly because their problem resolved by itself. With time, every person will possess clairvoyance and the capacity to have other realities and other worlds, your universes. We will become, as it is written in the Bible, like a man-god. That is to say, our capacities will become limitless. With each step, we will become closer to God. We are all gods by the fact of our birth. The Father who is in heaven is in reality our true Father. As we get closer to Him, with each step we get closer to our own divine state. If we go farther away from Him, we deprive ourselves of this divinity. Только горит где-то в тайной тиши Еле заметный светильник надежды Чаши из пита, глазницы пусты Темного века закроются вежды Надо спешить Сценарио и реализация by Александр Кибкало на суету и пустые раздумья Где-то мерцает таинственный свет Видны едва через морок безумия Время прорвется сквозь толщи оков Новое слово проявят скрижали Медленно съежится темный покров Почва взорвется святым урожаем 